Today I have three Victorian witch DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. I'm starting with the Victorian witch hat. This is a wire form that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to give you some measurements here so that you can find something similar if you don't have any at your Dollar Tree. You can certainly trace this out on a piece of foam board and make your own form. It'll work too. I've done that before on witch hats. I have some felt, just a little scrap here, but it's enough to cover most of my form. And this is going to be the backing. You could maybe use some construction paper or something like that on the back of yours if you choose. But this works for me because I had some scraps that I need to go through anyway. So rather than donating, let's use it. Leave about an inch around each of the sides of the form and then I'm going to cut into the corners here because we're going to wrap this around the wire form. Now my glue temperature setting is on low, so it's a cooler temperature. It's going to be easier to work with because I'm going to be using a lot of glue and it's going to prevent some materials that I use later on that are questionable when you're using a very high temp glue gun. So we're just going to use cool for this project. I'm just bending that over now, pressing it down onto this form and onto itself. It doesn't matter that my corners aren't covered, you'll see what we do with that later, but certainly if you have enough material to cover yours, you can go ahead and do that. And I'm going to wrap the bottom here. I find that using a squiggly line or a little zigzag gives me a little bit better coverage. I'm just pressing that down. You don't want to squeeze your form up. You don't want to change the shape of that wire and it's pretty pliable. So just be careful there. Follow the shape of your form. And I'm going to go all the way around and do the same thing. This is going to be the back. So what you're seeing is actually the inside and you'll understand that in a few minutes. You'll see what I'm going to do. So the point is going to go a little bit higher than the actual point on the witch's hat because I like the sharper taper on this. So there we go. It's got a little ratty looking end. I am totally okay with that. Now I'm going to take a pillow. This is just one I'm going to use to take the stuffing out of. I don't have any pillowcases to fit it, so it was also in the donation pile. I'm just going to take that apart, fluff it out really well. So it's not compacted or too lumpy. We want it to be cloud-like or wispy. Then I'm going to take, again, the cooler temperature glue. Start squeezing that out on the bottom of the triangle part of this hat. We're not going to go onto the flat or brim part of the hat with this. I'm going to get, this is going to be like a padding. So our hat's going to have some dimension rather than being a flat hat. So we're just going to continue along like this and make sure that it is on the inside and not bulging out over the outside, making sure we don't have any lumps that are bigger than anything else. And we're going to start off with a layer that's going to be pretty much the same width or thickness all the way down. I'm going to continue along and you can see that we have that nice and covered. We can still see all of the black edges. And that's good, we wanna do that. Now about halfway down or two thirds of the way down, we're gonna start thickening up on that section. That's gonna be a little wider, just like it would be with a regular hat. It's gonna be wider at the bottom because that's where your hat goes. It's where your head goes. Okay, so I love this contact paper. It came from the Dollar Tree. I've seen it used on lots of videos and lots of projects, but I thought what a beautiful, shabby, chic, witch's hat this would make. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm going to peel this apart and you're going to see that I have a little bit of a problem here getting off a clean finish, but that doesn't matter. That's not going to show. It's going to be kind of trimmed off. So you see there on the side, a little messy. That's okay. All right. So the pretty side down. Now I'm going to put the fluffy side of the hat down on top of it. So all of that batting is now on the adhesive side of that contact paper. Now I'm going to trim this out as well. Just going to start by trimming in the bottom and I want to leave 
more than an inch on the sides. I want to leave more of like probably two inches because we want to allow for the room that the, the batting on the inside creates or that pillow fluff. We don't want to squish it down till it's flat. So just pulling it and wrapping it around, pressing this down. My contact paper stuck just fine to this felt. If yours does not, go ahead and use a little bit of that glue or maybe some spray adhesive to help tack it down there. So I'm just going to wrap that part and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the brim there. I'm pressing it down. Then I'm going to cut and fold it down. That way I can still create that curve on the bottom. So see there? Now we still have that nice flat front just like this and we have the curve so making sure that the batting is not in the brim go ahead and pull that down and start pressing it down on the felt on the bottom of the back of that brim now you can either trim off that extra on the bottom or you can wrap it around it won't matter I'm just wrapping the tip up there elongating that hat just a tad and you can see that it's padded it's got some dimension and I love the look of it it came out exactly how I saw it in my mind and you know when you're crafting it doesn't always turn out that way you start with the idea and you think I'm gonna run with this and then you go completely off course and you do something else I like it when a plan comes together okay so we're gonna start with this lacy black trim this came from uh, Goodwill you can get yours wherever you like. Then you're going to start laying it down. Now I want that, excuse my head, I want that line down there close to the bottom for my first row because we're going to layer this going upwards and I want it to be thick and lush. So that means we're going to have to layer it pretty tightly in here. Now because I'm using a cool temp glue, it that bead of glue will sit right there on that. If you use hot glue, it's going to run down on your table and you're going to make a mess. Going to continue along just like this, layering over the top about hmm, probably a quarter of an inch, I would say. You can see where I'm running that bead of glue for each one of those layers, and you can do it all the way up. Keep in mind this is a curved, and if you're using a straight piece of ribbon, you may need to kind of bunch it up a little bit to get it to fit the curves of your hat. Okay, so we're going to cut it a little bit longer because we want to cover up that top piece. So you're just going to fold your lace over and press it down. That's going to give it the little black edge there. Just going to tuck under here and then keep going. And I'm going to do this process until I get up where the hat meets the brim. So the base of the hat, the triangle there, meets the brim. Easy enough, right? And I think one more run will be perfect. Y'all have to excuse my head. I'm standing up because I had to raise my camera way up high to be able to get this in the view for you. Okay, so same thing here. It's curved. We're just going to curve it on around, let it do its thing. We're not going to see it from the back, so this is not going to matter. Now, I also found this pretty mesh at uh, Goodwill as well. And I thought, well, it's a piece of, I guess, sheer material, sheer fabric. I'm just going to kind of accordion fold it or gather it up like this. And we're going to tie this to make like a sash around the hat. Now, I did not have any longer piece than this. I would have loved to have it hanging down like a veil, but I didn't have enough for that. So I'm doing what I can with what I've got. I had to use it on this piece though. Clearly it had to be used. It's very Victorian. I'm going to take that glue again on a cooler temp and be very careful that you don't burn your fingers, but the thickness of this is allowing me to touch it without hurting myself. I'm going to press it down and then you want to flip it over and do the same thing on the back. Keep it in mind that you want to keep it as low down to the brim as you can so there's no gaps just like that and by the way if you're looking for any of the products that I use most of my tools can be found linked below in the description box um, I am an Amazon affiliate so just so that you know that 
Um, I want to let you know that I do earn a tiny bit of money from it, but it, it's at no extra cost to you. So I just put those down there because I think it would be helpful to you. And if it helps you, then it helps me. Okay, so rather than tying in a knot, which would take up too much of the length of my little sash here, I've decided just to loop it over and tie it off. And I'm just tying it off with a little scrap piece of raffia that I have. But you can use ribbon, you can use a zip tie, whatever you want to use if you want to do it the same way as me. Now it's time to make it look very fancy. We're going to start using some picks. Use any type of black picks you have if we're doing black and white. I have some Weeping Willow, I have a Dollar Tree pick, and I have some thrifted, I think those are oak leaves down there. And I'm just going to kind of lay them out, see what I have, and see how I want to fix this for this hat. You could always go right across the brim on the bottom if you would like to do it this way. But I think I'm going to try something different. So trim up where you need to trim, and layer these on, just like I'm doing here. I try to keep these in my hand once I start cutting them down so I know exactly where to put my ties. These little picks from Dollar Tree are amazing in my opinion. There's so many different pieces on there. You can really trim them up and cut them down. You'll see me do that on a project later in this video as well. So right now we're just going to leave this as one piece. I'm going to take that bottom, that second piece of oak stem and put it across the bottom where the stems are so that you can't see them. And it is hid, and it makes a beautiful little swag, don't you think? I have some black zip ties. I'm going to put those around here. These are great. They come in a huge pack from Dollar Tree, so you really, really save money by buying them there. Clip it off. And then now we need to attach it down to our hat. Now, I already had this piece left from the sash, which is glued firmly in place. So I feel like it's going to be strong enough for this part just to tie it on right across where we attached it with a zip tie. So that's what I'm doing. Tying it off in a few knots. Trimming that off because we don't need it anymore. It's done its job. And then I'm going to see how I want it to hang. Do I want it to lay off to the side? Do I want it to stand up a little bit more? I think it needs a little bit more support. So I'm going to just take a piece of floral wire and flip this over and attach it right from the little stem here to the frame underneath. And it stands up like this, just off to a little slant. And you can see here where I twisted it, right there. It's staying in place quite nicely, just like that. Okay, so now the bottom part of our hat is done. We need to work on the top up there. I've got some of this really cool mesh tubing and it's kind of like a uh, spiky or tinsel-y like. It's got little things poking out of it. I don't know what you call that. But um, I got those from Dollar Tree in the Halloween section and I thought that's so cute and it kind of looks like spider legs. So I'm just gonna tie those up and then I want to put a jewel on there, right? Yes, a ruby would be beautiful since we have that red rose. So I'm just going to put some glue in the center and place down this beautiful jewel because this is a very regal witch and we want her to look lovely. And by the way, these leaves are velvet. They're so pretty. I'm going to tie this on and then tie it right on that little extra piece at the end of the hat. It elongates that hat. It really brings your eye up there and continues that beautiful richness from the top all the way down through the bottom. Once I've got it tied on, I'm going to glue it down because that is contact paper, which has a slick surface, and this could easily pop off. So I'm going to glue it down and trim it up and a little more glue behind that stone just to hold it in place. And I have no idea where I got this stone from. It was, has been in my craft supplies, so I'm not sure where it came from. Now, I wanted to dull this down just a bit because it was coming off a little bright. And she is a witch, so she's probably had this hat for a millennia. So I took my little furniture markers and just colored that down a little bit and uh, deepened up that color. Now, for the hanger, I'm just going to use a twisted piece of floral wire into a loop, press it down right over where that rope or that little piece of jute was before, let it dry, and then it's ready to hang. What do you think? This is definitely a different spin on a witch hat. 
for sure. Follow me on my social media. I'd love to see you on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay, now we have a Victorian dress form. If you don't have something like this that I got at Goodwill, you can definitely use those floral foams. One you would just cut like the top third of it off and invert it on top of a, another one that is completely one piece. And then you would get basically the same shape. But I'm gonna show you how to use it with what we have. So, some greenery picks in a reddish color. I've got another Dollar Tree pick, some red ribbon, and some more of that black trim. Love these. I should have gotten more. Really, really love them. I think they come in a purple, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a purple. Okay, so I have scraps of this left, and I thought, you know what? Let's do a wreath for him. Let's, let's give her a beautiful ball dress. So, of course, proportionately, you would never wear these two things together, but it gives you the idea of her having her dressing station and all of her goodies set up so that she can be beautiful and she can be queen of the Halloween ball. That's how I see this witch. She's a good witch. She's not bad. Okay, so to cover this top part, I'm just putting some little darts almost in here so that the bodice part, which is where my hand is, would go over the chest, would narrow down into the waist. And so in order to make that lay flat, I need to cut some slits up to that area and then just press it down. Very simple. And then you will see that it starts to have somewhat of a female shape. Okay, and then I'm just gonna trim this off here because there's gonna be something very special about this dress that you'll see at the end of the video, so be sure you stick around. Okay, now, because I don't have anything to really attach my contact paper to, I'm gonna use a little bit of clear tape. The bottom of this dress is gonna be wrapped with contact paper. This is so I have a nice, even easy surface to attach down my lace trim. So I'm just gonna cut down my contact paper. I got this from Dollar Tree, so you can find yours there. It's gonna be about the same height as it would be up to the waist area of that dress. Cut it down, take the backing off, and then I'm just going to lay it where it needs to be. Now, for this shape, I'm gonna basically try to get the bottom to fit first. So I'm sticking it down on the tape that's there. And that's why the tape is there. It has something for the contact paper to grip to. So I'm just pressing down with my fingers and I'm going to be trimming off what I don't need. So once we get all the way around, I won't need any excess. It's just in the way anyway. I'm gonna cut down to where the bottom of the dress starts to taper upward and then pull and overlap. You're not gonna see this, it is not a problem, but there you go. Now it's like a little closed in cage and we can put all of this lace right on top. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and start going around. Again, please use your cool temperature and protect your fingers. I didn't do it here. I should have had my finger protectors on, but I really wanted to get this video out to you, so I was rushing. People are enjoying, it seems, my Halloween content, so I am trying to make sure that I give you lots and lots to look at, lots of inspiration. I know I feel very inspired when I get comments from you guys and, you know, encouragement and love and support. It really makes me keep going. It really keeps me motivated and um, it just lightens my mood. It lightens my day and it makes this amount of work so much easier to do so i appreciate it so much can you guys believe we are over 4,000 now 4,200 and something so if you want to show me some love you can buy me a coffee look in the link down in the description box thank you it's certainly not required but i'll give you a shout out okay so when we get to the top and we're trying to finish off the waist section we're just going to fold this over kind of straight and then trim it down. Don't worry if this doesn't look perfect because we are going to embellish this, of course. So what do you think? This is a pretty little dress. Got her beautiful flowers on the top and the lace layers on the bottom. 
and we need to make the lace lay flat. So we're just going to take a couple of snips here into the natural little areas where the lace goes upward. We're just going to put some little slits there and that's going to help it lay flat when we put it down. So you'll see in just a moment, it's going to be a little blurry, but you, you get the gist. Okay, see? See now, it'll stand up straight and you can see the little lace on the bottom. I want to trim the top, so I've cut a piece of lace down. You can see how I'm trying to see how much I need. I'm going to trim it. I'm going to use that cool glue again. And then working in little sections, I'm going to go around the top with just the trim part of that lace and press it down right over the top. Just like that. Are you guys enjoying this video? Do you like witch decor and your Halloween? Good witch, of course. Nothing bad, nothing negative, nothing, you know. This is a this is a good witch. This could be Glinda the good witch at Halloween. Who knows? But I hope you do like it. And I've got lots of Halloween videos and all kinds of inspiration and goodness. So be sure you check out those videos as well. I will have them linked. All right, I'm just going to give a little extra trim here to cover up any extra glue or mess that I have there. And it's the same mesh. I'm just going to go around there. Do not press this mess. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Do not press the mesh down too firmly because it will go flat on you. It will be completely flat instead of cylindrical like that. Next, we're going to put uh, almost like a belt. And we're going to cut off a piece of ribbon here for that. And I'm going to cut my ends in a slant. You can dovetail um, or anything that you prefer to do on yours. And you don't have to use wired ribbon. And you don't have to use a piece that is this big. Totally up to you. Whatever you like. Okay. So I'm just going to take one of these picks and continue to cut it apart. Because we're going to use this in separate parts. This is a smaller item. So... The little spray of flowers that we're going to put on her waistline is going to be a bit smaller in scale than what is on the hat. So I'm just, you know, kind of looking around, seeing what I think I might like. I love this. And this is not a rose. This is like a carnation, I think. Okay, so I'm going to play around with my placement. See how I want each one of these little individual picks to go. You do whatever looks good to you. And certainly you don't even have to cut this apart. You could leave it into one piece if you like the way it was. Or just bend it around on the wires. But you'll have to cut the big stalk. That big chunk on the bottom off so that it lays flat. It's just going to be easier for you to work with. Take another one of those zip ties. And zip it up. Trim off your extra. I always use my clippers because I don't want to mess up my scissors. So I use these little bull nose pliers. Okay, now I'm just twisting around their own wire, so you can do that. And then going to decide how I want this to lay. What's going to be the top? What's going to be the bottom? I'm going to use this little ribbon sash that we made. And it's going to go right around that section. It's going to hold it down better than glue would hold it. Well, that's my opinion. That's my opinion and experience. And I've been doing this a long time. I always say, do what works for you. Now, I want to add some more red in here. And I think that the beautiful reddish color in these leaves from this thrifted pick will work great in here. So I'm just going to add two of these pieces, just the oak pieces, off of here. Thread it up. If you have extra pieces of wire, just cut those off. Just like that. Now you can put some picks in the top if you would like, and you will have a beautiful little arrangement. Those are my leftover picks. Or you can leave it just as it is. Whatever you choose to do is going to be great. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Okay, easiest one we got, our Deadly Delight jar. This is a jar that I thrifted and I put a just a decal on several years ago. I'm going to use some more of that batting. You can get all kinds of rub-on decals, by the way, at Dollar Tree. I'm going to put that batting on the inside. I have a little bag of creatures. This came from Dollar General a few years ago. 
I like to buy these things for the kids so that they can do projects and that we can make goodie bags for Halloween at school. So I've just picked out all the black ones because that's kind of the theme we're going with in here. And I'm going to place some of them down in that batting or that fluff. Just like that. Here and there and on the outside and sitting on top. And it's going to look sort of like this. Then we're going to take one of these little lights from Dollar Tree, pull the tab out of the bottom and turn it on. And it's going to look just like that. I'm going to make a little hole. I'm just using my fingers and the back of my little spatula here. And I'm going to turn that light back on and poke it down as far as I can get it in there. Cover the top, cover it up with a spider and put the lid back on it. And then we're going to have a little spooky deadly delight jar that's glowing. It looks better when the light's off, believe me. Okay, so those are our three witchy projects. Our Victorian shabby chic fancy witch. And here's what our little arrangements are going to look like displayed. What do you think about this? I gotta tell you, I'm kind of digging this. And you know I love my orange, black, and white, but something about this, even my husband said he really liked that. He couldn't believe that I made it. I love that. So encouraging. There we go. Look at that. So would you put something in the top of that or just leave it as is? And look at the bottom. I put a candle in there. It's a flameless candle, so now her dress will glow. Isn't that perfect? Again, I thank you for all your love and support. I thank you for stopping by. And hey, if you love this and it's your first time coming by, I'd love for you to subscribe and join our family. I'm going to see you soon. Bye.